It honors excellence, character, tenacity, and extraordinary accomplishments. Try to stop it, folks. Just try to stop it. So join us tonight as we salute Graham Harrell and the spirit of Johnny U. It's time to go out of bounds for the 2008 Johnny Unitas Golden Arm Award presentation. The historic Tremonts in Baltimore is the site of a grand gathering this evening. Sit back and enjoy your backstage pass to the Golden Arm Gala Out of Bounds. Hi everyone, I'm Greg Murphy. Welcome to a special edition of Out of Bounds. All season we have partnered with the Johnny Unitas Golden Arm Foundation and its major sponsor Transamerica to bring you the Race for the Golden Arm Award. It was a great competition and it was not easy to pick the best senior quarterback in college football. But when the Golden Arm Committee voted, it turned out there was a clear choice. A quarterback in the winning mold of Johnny U. And when we heard it here first on Out of Bounds, we were not surprised. 2008 Golden Arm winner is Graham Harrell from Texas Tech. The quintessential moment for Texas Tech quarterback Graham Harrell was his last gasp touchdown pass to Michael Crabtree that gave the Red Raiders a win over top-ranked rival Texas. Deep strike, got the big man. was impressive. But how about this? In late November, against Baylor, the senior brought his team back for a critical win, despite an early injury that shattered his non-throwing hand. Has time again, throws deep in the corner. Touchdown, Texas Tech! Harrell's stats were mind-boggling all season long, but the Golden Arm Award honors more than just numbers. It's about leadership and character, and when you combine performance in the clutch with productivity under pressure, this young man from the Lone Star State comes up large on all counts. And Graham Harrell is no one-year wonder either. He's had an amazing college career, throwing for over 4,000 yards in each of his last three seasons. If he throws two touchdowns in the Cotton Bowl, he will set a new NCAA record for TD passes. He's led his team to 28 wins and three bowl appearances. And he is here, live from the Tremont Grand in Baltimore, the 2008 Johnny Unitas Golden Arm Award winner, Graham Harrell of Texas Tech University. Hey, Graham, thanks for stepping out of bounds with us tonight. Oh, thank you for having me. It's a huge honor. Well, I'll tell you, there are a lot of college football awards out there, but to, to win the one that is named for a Hall of Famer like Johnny Unitas, that's got to be pretty special. What does that mean, the Unitas legacy mean to you? Oh, like I said, it's a huge honor, and uh, like you said, to win an award after uh, named after the, one of the greatest players to ever play this game is, is such an honor. And, and uh, you know, I feel so blessed to be here, and I'm so thankful for, uh, uh, for to the committee and to, or to the foundation and to uh, Mr. Unitas Jr. for, for choosing me. And, uh, you know, like I said, it's a huge honor, and I'm, I'm so proud to be here. What was it like when you got that phone call uh, earlier this week to, to let you know that you'd won the Golden Arm Award? It's really exciting. I, I got a call from a number I didn't know, and my media relations people <laughs> told me, if you, if you get a call from a number you don't know, answer it. And uh, so I did. And, uh, you know, he said, This is Johnny Unitas Jr. And I was like, Wow, Johnny Unitas Jr., you know, uh, uh, it's such a name that, that you've heard so much, and you, and you grew up uh, idolizing players like Johnny Unitas. And, and my dad always told me stories about how great of a player he was and how yeah. he was my dad's childhood hero. And, and to get a call from, from uh, Johnny Unitas Jr. to say I won an award named after his father was just such a great honor and uh, like I said I was so proud to receive it very very cool and I know your mom and dad are there tonight your coach as well Mike Leach is there got to be special to, sp to share all of that kind of football history with them as well no, no question. Uh, you know, my family or my parents have, have supported me. Uh, you know, well, my dad was my coach, so, so I grew right. up and learned the game of football from him, and, and they've supported me throughout my college career. And, then, and I've played for the best college coach in the country under Coach Mike Leach, who, uh, you know, does so much with, with the players he has and has turned Texas Tech into a nationally recognized program. And, um, and he's just the best there is. There's no question about it. So, you know, I've learned from two of the best coaches, uh, you know, in my opinion, there, there is from my father and Coach Leach. And, uh, and the rest of my support, you know, my assistant coaches that, that have coached me throughout my career. And uh, to, to be able to share this, this great honor with them is a, special, is a special moment. Absolutely. All right, Graham, let me explain to you what's going to happen next. We have a group of hardcore football folks here on the show. They all want to ask you questions, so I'll introduce them to you, and then we're going to let them fire 
away. So sit back and relax as I do that. This guy was a pretty darn good quarterback at Maryland. Honorable mention, All-American as a senior. He played eight seasons in the NFL. Scott Zolak is here. This gentleman used to chase quarterbacks, but don't worry, Graham, he's pretty gentle nowadays. Gary Cobb was a linebacker at USC and for 10 years in the pros. Brian Startari hosts the football show on Sports Radio WIP in Philadelphia, and we all know how they love their quarterbacks in Philadelphia. And Lou Holder is a fixture on the football scene in D.C., covering the Redskins locker room for the better part of a decade. So, Graham, we're going to put you in the middle in a place that we call the crosshairs and let our gang blitz you with some questions. First up, it's your fellow quarterback, Scott Zolek. So go ahead, Scott. Graham, first of all, congratulations. Good luck at the next level. <laughs> it's funny you mentioned your well, dad. Thank you very much. It's, you're welcome. It's funny you mentioned your dad and having Johnny Unitas as his hero. That was kind of my first question. I grew up in Pittsburgh, you know, running around out in the backyard. I tried to emulate guys like Dan Marino, Joe Montana, guys from your hometown. Who was the one guy that you idolized the most and why? Joe Montana. Growing up, uh, you know, I guess being born in the middle of the 80s, uh, it was kind of the Joe Montana era, I guess. And uh, uh, and watching watching as a little kid football with my dad and my older brother, uh, Joe Montana was the man to me. Leading great, uh, come from behind victories in the fourth quarter, winning Super Bowls, winning Super Bowl MVPs. To me, uh, Joe Montana was was the man I wanted to be and uh, was the quarterback that I wanted to be. So so he was my childhood hero, I guess. He grew up by Lazy, wanted to be just like him. I remember playing in the backyard, like you said, uh, being Joe Montana. So uh, you know he was such a great player and he was like a, like I said, my role model or my my sports hero. Graham, congratulations from down here in Washington, D.C. Your coach was very outspoken about you not being invited to the Heisman ceremony uh, up in New York. Your take on it, I mean, how do you feel about the quote-unquote snub of not being invited to the Heisman ceremony? Does it bother you at all? No, not too much. Uh... You know, like uh, we, we had a great season, and we feel like that we've had as good of a season as anyone in the country. And, and the Heisman Trophy lately has been going to uh, just one of the one of the best players on, on the be on the best teams. And and uh, with that criteria, I mean, if you're going by that criteria, every team in the country has lost at least one game, and that's all we've lost too is one. So uh, we feel like we've had just as good of a season as anyone, and I uh, feel like we deserve to be you know mentioned for the Big 12 championship earlier and for national con uh, national championship contention and things like that. And uh, we kind of got overlooked on that, and then getting overlooked in the Heisman again was, uh, you know, just another one of those deals that I think has a lot to do with the politics of college football and, and, the, and there being major programs or uh, traditional powerhouses that get a lot more attention than, than schools that aren't traditional powerhouses. So, um, you know, that's the way college football goes. But, but all these other awards that I've been recognized for and being here at the Unitas Award and winning it is, is such a great honor. And, and uh, not going to the Heisman Trophy ceremony or BCS Bowl game, it, you know, doesn't take away from the great season we've had. We've had an excellent season. We've got won 11 games at Texas take something that's 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 unheard of out in Lubbock and uh, you know and like you said like I said we, we we have a big cotton bowl game and that's a first class bowl where they treat you right and uh, we, we're getting recognized Crabtree won the Blinton cough last night and uh, you know won the Unitas tonight so so some of our players are getting re recognized and rec uh, and I guess representing the team uh, on, on the, with these national awards so so we are getting some recognition and uh, and things like that but we have been overlooked in certain areas that we would have loved to have been in but uh, that's that's the way college Sports are in the, in the way the system's set up right now, and, and there's not much you can do about it. <laughs> Graham, first of all, congratulations with the rest of the panel. But I personally want to thank you for making the Big 12 such a phenomenal conference this year with Texas Tech. I mean, I think it superseded the SEC in exciting football. And that being said, let's go back to your comments just a little bit where you talk about the Big 12. There is Texas and there's Oklahoma. And I heard you say about the football powerhouses. Well, Texas Tech had one hell of a season this year, and I think they've had quite a run here. And you talked about how good Mike Leach was. What's it going to take to change the perception to make Texas Tech a powerhouse in college football? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, like I, like you mentioned, the, the, those other schools like Texas and like Oklahoma, our traditional powerhouses have been, you know, they win 10 or 11 games every year. So uh, winning that many games at those schools uh, really hasn't proven that much, I don't think. And winning 11 games at Texas Tech is, is doing a whole lot just because <laughs> of the tradition of college sports. But, uh, you know, in my opinion, it, it, they should they should measure each each year as a, as a new year and give everyone an equal shot. But 
uh, that's not really the way it is in my opinion. In my opinion, that, uh, when all things are equal, uh, the traditional powerhouses are, are always going to come out on top over schools you know, like Texas Tech. But um, in order to get to that set, you know, I mean, they, they do win 10, years, 10 games, it seems like, every year. In order to, to get on that level, Texas Tech just has to continue to have years like this. And Coach Leach has done a great job building that program. And if he decides to stay at Texas Tech, uh, he will only continue to build the program and continue to win football games like he is right now because, like I said, I think he's the best coach in the country. And, um, you know, I think that if Texas Tech can, can build off this season, continue to win 10, 11 games every season, uh, then, then, they'll, then they'll start playing on a little more even playing field with, with Texas and with Oklahoma's of the world and, uh, you know, have a chance that, that when, you know, they've had as good of a season as anyone in the country, uh, have, have just as good a shot as going to the Big 12 championship or going to a national title and things like that. But, uh, you know, we're trying to get Texas Tech to that level. And I think this year had a, it has really helped it. It really helped the program get national recognition. And, uh, you know, we still have a long ways to go to, to, you know, be on the same level as some of those other great schools. But uh, it's going in the right direction. Okay, you know, Graham, you know, I, I've seen you make, you know, all the throws this year. I mean, uh, that, that back, back shoulder throw you just made uh, to Crabtree. Uh, look at the throws. I've seen you stick it in there, uh, go with the deep ball touch passes it seems like you can make all the throws now I know you guys look at each other play now how do you think you stack up uh, with the other guys uh, you know McCoy Bradford and Tebow as a as a pure thrower well, as a pure thrower I mean if you go on stats alone I'm just as good as any of them I guess but uh, those players are great players there's no question about it uh, they deserve all the recognition they're getting and uh, uh, they, they've really helped their teams uh, have, have great seasons uh, just like we've had down at Texas Tech. So, um, you know, they're, they're great players just, like, just, as, just as well. And uh, like I said, deserve all the recognition they're getting. But, um, you know, if you all wins, Texas Tech has just as many as any of them. I mean, before, obviously, the conference championship games. Uh, you know, if you go on statistics, we put up the same numbers as any of them. So, uh, you, know, you know, I think myself and the other players at Texas Tech and the program deserve to be recognized on an even playing field. But, um, uh, you know, they're coming from programs that, that win more games than us, you know, on a year, I mean, I guess traditionally. So, uh, you know, like I said, they get a little more attention, I guess, from the media and things like that. Texas Tech has never been a big media darling or anything like that. So. Uh, it, it's tough to play on an equal playing field with those guys, but, but like I said, I think we match up fine with them. I mean, we beat Texas uh, head to head this year. Sure. Uh, we've had a great run, and uh, you know it was a great season. And we look forward to, like I said, playing in the Cotton Bowl. Like that's uh, that's one of the best bowls in the country. Uh, they treat you right, and uh, it should be a fun game for us. Graham, when you put up those type of stats in one year, which is basically a career for some guys, you, you get under the microscope more. People tend to analyze and dissect you. And you look at some of the former quarterbacks under Steve Spurrier. They've been called, you know, system quarterbacks. What's your take on some of your detractors that may say, this guy's a system quarterback? Like a Todd Reese. Uh, you know, if it's just our system that allows us to have success, then. Uh, I've said it before, then there should be 117 coaches uh, knocking at Coach Leach's door and learning the system That's and putting right. up the same numbers we're putting up. Cause, right. uh, you know, we're putting up big numbers statistically and, and points and uh, scoring lots of offensive points, uh, having great seasons, winning lots of football games. And, and if it's the system, then I don't know why everyone in the country doesn't come talk to Coach Leach and learn the system <laughs> and do it just as well as we do. Graham, you know, I, I, I want to go back to what you said about Joe Montana earlier, wanting to be him in the pros. It reminds me of Brady Quinn two years ago who said, listen, it was a dream of mine to play for the Browns, and now I'm there. Put yourself after the Cotton Bowl. You're going into the NFL draft. When you were back in the backyard, whose helmet did you have on in the NFL? Well, I probably had the 49ers on just because Joe Montana was there. You don't want to go there. A later, if it was a little later in my career, I guess I was wearing the Chiefs helmet. All right, you may you want know, to go Joe there. in his career there. But, uh, you know, if I got to choose, I would love to go to Dallas and, and, play, and play at home. Or uh, I like warm weather, so I'd like to stay in the south. But I'll play anywhere that anywhere they'll take me. So, um, you know, I'll, if we'll they give me a shot, Philly. I'll be glad to go play there. <laughs> well, thank you. You got that. <laughs> Brian's already got it all figured out, Graham Howard. Graham, you are out there of the crosshairs right now. But but uh, before I let you go, I do want to point out, you know, sitting here and listening to you, it is so evident. But uh, maybe some people don't know that uh, academics, obviously, a huge part of what you're all about as well in Academic All-America. Uh, talk a little bit about that as you uh, finish up your college career. 
Oh, well, uh, you know, like you said, the, the Johnny Unitas Award doesn't only uh, recognize you for your on-field success. I mean, that obviously has a, a plays a huge role in yeah. who wins the Unitas Award, but um, it recognizes all-field success as well, uh, leadership in the community, I guess, and, and academics. And, uh, you know, it's great to, to really be recognized for, uh, you know, the, the, the positive things that athletes do off the field. A lot of times you see all the negative negative stories on Sports Center or on, on uh, you know, any sports show that are in the newspapers. They point out all the negative things that, that are going on with athletes, but um, you know there's plenty of good things going on, and, and athletes are doing things right, and uh, it's great to be recognized for for doing more than just playing good football. You know, doing things right in the class. You know, I graduated yep. in three and a half years, so I graduated last December, yep. and uh, I've been working on my uh, graduate. You know, I've been taking graduate classes. Uh, you know, I've had a 4.0 in graduate classes, so um, you know, school school is very important, and football is not going to last forever. And you better have a backup plan. And and uh, if you're getting paid to go to school, I mean, if you know, if you're getting your school paid for, you might as well take advantage of that opportunity, get an education, so you can have uh, job opportunities uh, when your playing career is over. So, um, you know, school, it, it, like I said, it's great to be recognized for more than just on the field success. Well, Graham Harrell, you certainly have been, and uh, we appreciate you stepping out of bounds with us tonight, just like the guys before you with this Golden Arm Award. Certainly a perfect candidate. Go enjoy the party tonight. And once again, congratulations on the award. Thank you very much. It was my honor. All right, Graham Harrell, your 2008 uh, Johnny Unitas Golden Arm Award winner. We have a great hour on the way with two Hall of Famers scheduled to speak tonight. Raymond Berry and Sam Huff are headed to the podium, as well as some other special guests from the Baltimore Colts Golden Era. Plus, Texas Tech coach Mike Leach will say a few words. And Graham Harrell will accept the 2008 Johnny Unitas Matt Golden Arm Award. Last year, we gathered at the Tremont to celebrate Matt Ryan as the 07 Golden Arm winner. He's done all right for himself since. Since then, here's what Matt Ryan said when he took the stage to accept that trophy one year ago. It's really an honor for me to be inducted, or not inducted, but chosen as, as the award winner this year and, and to become a part of a fraternity of, of great quarterbacks that um, have so many qualities that I, that I hope to uh, have in myself, and, and it's something that is very, very, very special to me. This Out of Bounds special presentation of the 2008 Johnny Unitas Golden Arm Award is brought to you by Transamerica, by Black & Decker, by Dunbar Armor, by Mortgage Seekers, and by MedStar Health. Out of Bounds and the Johnny Unitas Golden Arm Educational Foundation wish to thank all of our sponsors for a great 2008 season. The Johnny Unitas Golden Arm Award has gone to some pretty fair quarterbacks in the last few years who have added Super Bowl rings and all pro credentials to go along with their Golden Arm hardware. Graham Harrell should feel pretty good about joining this crowd tonight. Hey, welcome back to Out of Bounds. Special coverage of the 2008 Johnny Unitas Golden Arm Award. I'm Greg Murphy. The award celebration is about to begin at the Tremont's historic venue in Baltimore. So let's take you there right now and hand things over to our master of ceremonies for the evening from the fan 105.7 radio, Scott Garceau. Thanks, Murph, and welcome to Baltimore, everybody. Tonight we're here to honor the legend that was John Unitas and a young man that uh, is, is now part of that legend. And I think for all of us in this room, John touched us in some way, whether it's a family member, teammates, uh, fans, and friends. Uh, somebody has been touched by number 19 and, and the legacy that John has left with us. And tonight we honor a young man that's going to continue that legacy. Uh, he's done some spectacular things on the field. He's being honored for that, but he's also being honored for the type of person he is. And all of us who, who knew John know what a special guy he was. We'd like to recognize some of his former teammates uh, and special guests that are with us tonight. And we start, we start with some Hall of Famers. And uh, the first Hall of Famer for the Baltimore Colts, the man sitting right here on the end, Art Donovan. Artie? And John's favorite target for a lot of years, uh, a man who had a, a, a wonderful game and had a lot to do with the Colts winning the greatest game ever played, Hall of Famer Raymond Berry. <laughs> Next, a man who chased John on a lot of Sundays while he was putting together a Hall of Fame career for the New York Giants, now part of the Washington Redskins broadcast team, Hall of Famer Sam Huff. <laughs> and a man who spent uh, 
a lot of years doing in baseball what John did for this town in football, the man who invented the position at third base, good friend, Hall of Famer, Brooks Robinson. And we have with us uh, three Colts from that 70s era that won three straight division titles, linebacker Stan White. <laughs> Safety, Bruce Laird. And the man who kicked it through the uprights, Tony Linhard. Take a bow, Tony. Right now, I'd like to call on the president of the Golden Arm Foundation and the son of the Golden Arm, John Unitas, Jr. John? Well, thank you, Scott, for the introduction, and uh, thank everyone for attending. I appreciate it, uh, and the foundation does also. Um, it's great to be here this evening to celebrate uh, the accomplishments of a very gifted quarterback who just completed an outstanding year. Graham Harrell epitomizes all that my dad envisioned and is, is established for the Golden Arm Award. <clears throat> Excuse me. He recognized that being a great quarterback and a great person did not depend solely on his on-field accomplishments. It also depends on your character, your leadership abilities, and your off-field achievements, both in, as a citizen and in Graham's case as a student. I think it's important, though, that all of us recognize this award for, for <clears throat> this award is about more than recognizing the accomplishments of an outstanding young man. My dad never forgot his humble beginnings. He always believed in giving back. This is what <clears throat> won him a place in the hearts of everyone whose life he touched. Part of his legacy and his commitment to give back was to establish the Johnny Unitas Golden Arm Educational Foundation, and it was also what, what we're, here to, we're here with tonight to celebrate. The Golden Arm Foundation promotes football on all levels, including uh, providing financial aid to deserving young, fine, young athletes, such as Graham. To date, the foundation has awarded more than a half a million dollars to, in scholarships to deserving young students in both Maryland and Kentucky. It is your continuing commitment in, in sponsoring this event that is helping to make my dad's dream a, a continued reality and making a difference to a scholar athlete to whom award scholarships are awarded each year. With that in mind, I would like to thank our many sponsors who have made a financial commitment in order to make both this evening and the scholarship awards possible. I first want to th thank the Tremont Hotels, Tremont Grand. As you can see, it is a wonderful uh, facility. They do a wonderful job from soups to nuts, uh, from a combination of our, of, our, of our guests and our athlete, and uh, we, we appreciate it very much. Next, I want to thank uh, Union Memorial Sports Medicine, MedStar Health, uh, Lou Lyons, Harry Ryder, uh, Les Matthews. We appreciate your continued financial support. Black & Decker, Century Engineering, City Group, the uh, Bottiford Chorus Group, Dunbar Armored, Maple Leaf Title, Mortgage Seekers, Southwest Airlines, um, and of course, I, I can't leave out Transamerica, which I'll get to in just a minute. I would also like to recognize the many organizations that provided in-kind assistance also to the Golden Arm Foundation. CN8, the Out of Bounds Program, we thank you for being here again, uh, which has been our promotional partner throughout the college football season. Uh, CN8 has given extensive, extensive coverage to our awards process, and as you can see, the Network's Out of Bounds Program here tonight is broadcasting this ceremony live. My ad box for providing the RSVP uh, services and the collateral material. Uh, R2 Integrated, which handled graphics as well as our website. Uh, Weiss, Weiss PR Associates, which has provided my public relations and national outreach media tonight and uh, as well for the foundation throughout the year. Uh, and of course, again, I can't forget the Tremonts. And finally, I want to recognize, as I, I alluded to earlier, our presenting sponsor. Without them, uh, quite frankly, we wouldn't be here. Uh, Transamerica has been an incredible supporter of the Golden Arm Award and the Foundation. Uh, they truly have done what my dad did, and that is give back to the community. And in doing so, like my dad, they have won a permanent place in the hearts of all of us who have touched, been touched by the work uh, of the Golden Arm Foundation. Uh, Murph, I think we'll take it back to you. Good, John. I don't know if you can hear me. Thank you, John. I appreciate that. Yeah, the presence of the Baltimore Colts that we saw there, the alumni at the event, always brings the legend of Johnny Unitas to life again. And on the 50th anniversary of the Colts' historic championship, it is a thrill to relive a great era in football. And our Jeff Shirilla is at the Tremont tonight, and he is standing by with a Hall of Famer, Art Donovan, who always has plenty to say. Right, Jeff? What do you got? 
Thank you very much, Murph. I am here uh, in the crowd with uh, Artie Donovan. First of all, what does it mean for you as the first Colt to ever go into a Hall of Fame to be here with one of your former teammates handing out the award for the Golden Arm Award to see that here tonight handed out to Graham Harrell? Well, the guys in in inducted me into the Hall of Fame didn't know what the hell they were doing. <laughs> okay? I mean, Hall of Fame. <laughs> yeah, the guy alongside him is a great end. Great end. The other guy... He's a great football player. You're talking about Raymond, Raymond Barry and Sam Huff, but talk about, talk about Johnny Unitas and what it means for, for you to be here tonight honoring him with this award. Well, if you really want to know the truth. Go ahead. When John Unitas came to the coast, I think it was 56, okay? And we were up in the training room, and I'm on a training table getting my feet scratched. And I look over, and there's this skinny little guy over there. And I said to the trainer, who's that guy? He says, uh, it's a guy from, uh, uh, from Pittsburgh. He got cut by the Steelers, and he, uh, he's trying out for the Colts. I said, how the hell can he try out for the football team? He's a quarterback, he's got a bad shoulder. I said, he'll never make it. <laughs> well, well, on that note, we certainly know the rest of the story. We've got a lot more going on here in Baltimore. We'll have uh, the Graham Harrell accepting the award coming up from here in the, uh, the hotel room. Thanks, guys. Still to come tonight, Hall of Famers Raymond Berry and Sam Huff step to the microphone. And Texas Tech coach Mike Leach shares his thoughts on Graham Harrell. Plus, the presentation of the Golden Arm Award and words from the winner. It's all straight ahead on this special edition of Out of Bounds. Baltimore's Tremont's historic venue and all suite hotel is the place to be tonight for the 2008 Johnny Unitas Golden Arm Award presentation. The program continues with keynote speeches, so let's send it back to the Master of Ceremonies, Scott Garceau. Scott? And welcome back to the 22nd annual Golden Arm Award. We heard from one Hall of Famer in Art Donovan. Now we'll hear from another. This man retired as the all-time reception leader in the NFL. He was voted to the NFL's 75th year anniversary team. And in the greatest game ever played about 50 years ago this month, he caught 12 passes from John Unitas for 178 yards. As a coach, he coached the Patriots to the Super Bowl. Ladies and gentlemen, John Unitas' friend and favorite receiver, Raymond Berry. <laughs> Graham, this uh, award, as you figured out by now, has a lot to do with John Unitas. <laughs> and uh, I think you need to know something from uh, a guy that knew him a lot of years of what he represented uh, as a football player. I think the number one characteristic that uh, John brought to the job was uh, mental toughness. Uh, it was woven in with a tremendous confidence that he had uh, and a great competitive spirit. And he was an instinctive uh, football player also. And as a teammate watching him over, playing with him 12 years, we took for granted really how unselfish and team oriented he was. He was interested in winning the football game and could have cared less who or what or how we did it. And everybody on the team uh, knew that. To, uh, and you know, I'm talking about uh, a quarterback that, you know, in the history of the National Football League, uh, is certainly one of the top two, three had ever played the game. But I haven't even mentioned physical attributes at this point. And one of the things that, uh, in observing quarterbacks over a long period of time, I've come to the conclusion that uh, if you're looking for a guy to win a world championship for you, you start down that list of intangibles before you even fool around with the physical. 
And, uh, you know, I've been watching your career at uh, Texas Tech, uh, and uh, you all seem to throw the ball every once in a while. And, uh, you know, when John Unitas was in college, they had uh, uh, unusual offense for their day in which he threw a lot. So you've uh, definitely got the physical skill. That's been very obvious. And I just, uh, as I assess you and watch you over the last couple of years, I'm thinking, I think you've got all these intangibles too. So uh, do you have an agent at this point? <laughs> Thank you, Raymond. That was a man who, who played with uh, John and, and knew the dedication, the hours that they spent after the rest went in for practice, working patterns and, 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 and throwing the football and uh, the subtleties of the game uh, ma made them both Hall of Famers. This next man can give us a little different perspective because uh, he was on the opposite side of the line of scrimmage. Oh, let's go back to Murph first. Let's go back to Murph now, and then we'll hear from Sam Huff. That's coming up. We're going to hear from another Hall of Famer in just a minute. presentation coming up shortly. Right now, we'd like to introduce another Hall of Famer. As I said, a man who played on the other side of the line of scrimmage, and he had the difficult job of trying to stop John Unitas, Raymond Berry, Lenny Moore, and that Hall of Fame Baltimore Colts offense. A Hall of Famer in his own right, and pretty special. He is a member of the National High School Hall of Fame. He is a, he is a member of the College Football Hall of Fame, and he is also a member of the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Ladies and gentlemen, great linebacker and current broadcaster, Sam Huff. Sam? Well, thank you very much. Um, it really is a pleasure to be in Baltimore. I don't give a damn what people say. Okay? This is nice. You know, why in the hell did you have to bring Artie out here? Where's your Slitz beer, for Christ's sake? Okay? I mean, look at him. That's what it happens when you, when you drink and play. I mean, Artie. <laughs> now, hey, I just want to say, truthfully, John Unitas is the greatest one I've ever seen. And uh, uh, he, he never ran out of the pocket, which is, I, lo I love that. He, he was no Fran Tarkin, let me tell you. I chased that little sucker all over the, the field, too. Never did catch him. But I did catch Billy Kilmer down in New Orleans when he was, with, when, when he was running quarterback. And I hit him so hard, I knocked him into the air, into the Gatorade table, broke the Gatorade table. Gatorade flew all overs. And the whole New Orleans Saints team, plus the owner, jumped on me and were pounding the daylights out of me. That's what linebackers do, okay? We create havoc, and that's what we do. Um, we never knew how to play John Unitas. Uh, it was unbelievable. And I, I remember calling a place, defensive place, that's before they stuck a radio in all the ball players' ears now so the coaches can call it, which I think is the worst thing anybody can do. And if I was this young man, when they do that to you, just, ah, it's out of order. You got to call your own place, okay? <laughs> Start from the beginning. That's my advice to you. You're going to be responsible, then you be responsible, and you call your own place. Don't listen to a guy who never played the game standing on the sideline, okay? We have enough of those guys that can kick the ball sideways and get it, never play the game. Don't hit me, you know. You're going to be that kind of guy. You don't want to get hit. Stay in that pocket. Don't be like Fran Target in and try to run everybody to death. You stay in that pocket, and you don't listen to that offensive coach that never played, okay? <laughs> Okay, that's my advice to you because there's a guy that played this game by the name of Dick Butkus that would put you in four rows of seats in Wrigley Field, right? Sam Huff would put you in the stands at Yankee Stadium, and Ray Nitschke 
would knock you out of the ballpark in Green Bay. And you, you don't want to play in any of those stadiums, but you don't want to go up against those kind of linebackers either. So stay in the pocket and don't listen to that coach, okay? John Unitas didn't listen to the coach, who was Don Shula, right? And I'll tell you what happened. He didn't, he didn't play John Unitas in a Super Bowl that Joe Namath won against, okay? He didn't play John Unitas. I was there. The Colts were 17 point favorites over the Jets. Joe Namath, the Sun Baker, out on the beach. Don't worry about it. We're going to win this game. And I said, he's crazy. You know, he's built just like John. He, can't, he couldn't fight off a linebacker or a defensive end by that. Joe Namath, he likes the beach. The Colts will kill him. I was as wrong as Artie, right? And, and Earl Morrill plays, and John United sit on the bench, and I'm sitting in the stands. And I, I, I didn't bet on the game, but I would have bet that the Colts would win the game. And they didn't, okay? And they got beat in one of the greatest games, biggest upset, I think, in the history of sports. Because why? The coach didn't play the quarterback. And when you have that, that kind of direction, football games are won by players, not by coaches. And I don't care. Is a coach in here? I don't care. <laughs> okay? I don't care. Now they got a radio in the, in the linebacker's ear. I mean, yeah. I, I tell these linebackers, don't listen to them. Stan White. Can you imagine putting a radio in Stan White's ear? He's just like me. A little crazy. That's what makes you a great linebacker. But, you know, you don't want to run a ball because we're there, okay? <laughs> so that's the advice that we give you young, okay, young. Uh, they say, well, you're not so tough. Artie's told me that all the time. He tells me, oh, you're not so tough, huh? Well, you know, that's one of the things, you know, that you put up with from a defensive tackle, right? What defenses did he ever call? Right? Oh, got to go get the passer. I got to go get the passer. Well, Marchetti already has him down. What the hell are you rushing the passer for? <laughs> I mean, this is over 50 years ago, and I'll tell you this. Not one person in this room that cannot give you the starting lineups, the starting lineups of the Baltimore Colts and the New York Giants. The starting lineups. And I'll tell you what. I broadcast the game the other night, and Bruce Laird are here, is here, and Stan White is here. I bet you, without their notes, they can't give you the starting lineup to the Ravens, okay? They have to look at the public relations releases that they put out so these guys can broadcast the game, because you don't know, you know, you don't know who's playing football anymore. I mean, guys going on the field, off the field, you know, that's why they have their name on the back, so they don't get them confused anymore, right? <laughs> We didn't even have that, did we, Artie? We didn't have our names on the back. We didn't want anybody to know who we were. <laughs> yeah. Wake up, Artie. Shake his chair, will you? Hey. No, hey, listen, I just want to say this to you. This is a young man here. Stand up and let the people see you, okay? Would you please stand? I mean, I saw him last night. Well, we could sit there and listen to Sam Huff all night. We'll rejoin the festivities in just a minute. The best is yet to come when we come back to our special edition of Out of Bounds. We'll hear from Texas Tech coach Mike Leach and award winner Graham Harrell. He's the reason we're here, Out of Bounds, at the Johnny Unitas Golden Arm Award presentation. Stay with us. Field of contenders for this year's Johnny Unitas Golden Arm Award. Of course, very deep. Chase Daniel of Missouri took his team to the Big 12 championship game. What more can Brian Johnson do of Utah undefeated this season? John Parker Wilson brought Alabama to the brink of the national championship game. And of course, Pat White, the prolific runner and passer at West Virginia. What a season he had as well. You got to hand it to the Golden Arm Foundation Committee. Not an easy task at all picking this year's winner, but in the end, I think they got it right. Graham Harrell just a few minutes away from accepting this year's year's award so let's rejoin the program in Baltimore here's our host Scott Garcel Scott now it's time to hear from the man who had the pleasure of coaching the Golden Arm Award winner 
He is in his ninth year as the head coach of the Texas Tech Red Raiders. Uh, their, their season isn't over. They still got a bowl game to play, but it's been a wonderful season, 11 and one. And when you come from Texas and you got to win over Texas, that's a pretty good season. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Graham's coach, Mike Leach. <clears throat> Well, after hearing all that, just for the fun of it, uh, I think I'd kind of like to see Sam Huff hit uh, Graham Harrell because uh, <laughs> we could kind of clear out the middle of this room and uh, Graham could run backwards a little bit and Sam could have his fun. And, why, and, uh, and I think we'd all enjoy it. And then, uh, and, then, and then after that, we'll let Art Donovan get his licks in too. <laughs> I, uh, I want to I want to thank everybody for having us. I want to thank uh, Kathy and uh, and Sam, my uh, uh, Graham's parents. Uh, Sam Sam Harrell's a great uh, a great high school coach in the state of Texas, uh, which uh, some of you may not be aware. And and so uh, you know part of my work was done when when Graham Harrell came to my place. Uh, he, he he knew how to throw the ball well, knew how to uh, uh, attack defenses and. Uh, you know, through some of the tremendous training of his father. Uh, there's a lot of stories about uh, Graham. I mean, biggest comeback in the history of uh, college football. And then, you know, the, the just a really a good uh, competitor. And, and, you know, we we throw a ball against Texas, which uh, contrary to popular belief, we work on, we work on it every day. And, uh, uh, you know, for lack of a better description, you uh, throw it to the cheek away from coverage and let him turn and go straight up field, and he executed that to perfection to beat Texas. But his composure uh, at key times has always been amazing to me. And, um, uh, you know, and then the most recent game, uh, uh, he, he breaks two fingers, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, holds the ball and the guy whacks him and he breaks these two fingers here. Well, we don't know if they're dislocated, but he says, he says, hey, I've got to call a timeout. And, you know, one's this way and one's that way. And, and I said, well, we don't want to waste it. He says, yeah, I know, but my fingers are broken, you know. And so, so then the trainer comes over, you know, and the trainer says, oh, it's just dislocated. And, and he, says, uh, he says, you know, I'm going to pull on it. And Graham says, no, 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 it's broken. I'm telling you, it's broken. It's wiggling around. I said, well, go ahead and pull it. What do we got to lose, you know? <laughs> and, and, uh, and, so, and so he yanks on it. And so finally Graham says, I told you it's broken. And I, and I said, well, so do you want to come out? He goes, no, no, I'm not going out. I said, well, just in case, get Potts over there to warm up, you know? And, and, and he says, it'll be all right. I just can't go under center. I'm thinking, well, you never go under center anyway. <laughs> and and um, so, uh, well, anyway, long story short, uh, he came, came back, did a masterful job, uh, uh, tore him up. And, and, and then the other thing that really gives me pleasure, um, I was checking to see if he had his name on the back, but what, that really gives me uh, pleasure as far as being in, 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 at this award. I mean, there's awards all over the place named after all kinds of people. Uh, and and uh, with rare exception, most of them are pretty good awards. I can think of one that I have some reservations about. But the, um, the, uh, this, this particular award here is named after the best player, so it's probably the best award. Johnny Unice is better than all those other players that, uh, that the awards are named after. So this is the best one to get, and I'm uh, very proud to uh, be a part of... Uh, of uh, coaching uh, the the, G, the Johnny Unitas Award winner and uh, and uh, so it's it's my pleasure and, and but I think that we'll have the opportunity to see him play for uh, some time to come. Anyway, thank you. Thanks, Mike. I love the way you fight for your guys and good luck in the Cotton Bowl. Right now, it's time to present the Golden Arm Award, and uh, we, we've heard a lot about this young man. Uh, the numbers speak loud, 15,429 passing yards, 130 touchdowns. He's breaking all kinds of national records. Uh, a quality player, obvious, 
11 and 1, the win over Texas, uh, the Cotton Bowl coming up to finish his college career, but a quality player and most of all a quality person that John Unitas would be proud of. Ladies and gentlemen, the 2008 Golden Arm Award winner, Graham Harrell. Graham? There's also a, a, a nice ring that goes with. Graham, can we get you? <laughs> John got it in his pocket. We'll, we'll hold that for you so you can get over here and say a few words, Graham. Thank you. Thank you. First of all, I'd like to thank, uh, you know, Johnny Unitas Jr. and the whole Unitas family and the, and the foundation and all their sponsors for, for bringing us up here and treating us so well. And, uh, you know, like Coach said, it's, it's a huge honor to receive this award, to, uh, you know, especially considering it's named after one of the greatest players ever to play the game. I can remember growing up and uh, all Dad talked about was Johnny Unitas and Johnny Unitas was Dad's hero. So, uh, you know, it's a huge honor. And, um, I'm so grateful for it, and you know we had a great season this year, and I think that my teammates deserve just as much credit as I have. But uh, you know, me and both Crabtree both uh, have been getting a lot of recognition after the season. But I think we're just representing the entire team and the success we had this year, and uh, it, it's a it's a it's an honor to, to represent those guys. And uh, and uh, you know we look forward to playing in the Cotton Bowl coming up. And uh, I'd like to thank also my parents and my coach, Coach Leach. I was, uh, you know, my family have been so supportive to me throughout it all. And, uh, you know, I've been coached by two of the best coaches there are. You know, my dad, I think, is one of the best high school coaches in the world. And, and Mike Leach is the best college coach in the country. You know, the, what, he's be, what he's been able to do with the uh, Texas Tech's program is unbelievable. And, uh, you know, he's the best there is. And so I've been coached by the best coaches. And they deserve a lot of the credit for, for me standing here today. So, um, once again, I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Unitas Jr. and the entire Unitas family for having, a, having us up here today and treating us well as they have. the proud tradition of Johnny Unitas Golden Arm Award winners, a line that includes both Manning brothers, Carson Palmer, Brady Quinn, and Matt Ryan a year ago. Great stuff. And we'll be back with reaction, more reaction from Baltimore on this very special edition of Out of Bounds. So stay with us. The hardware has been handed over. Graham Harrell has said his piece, and we are nearly done here at the 2008 Johnny Unitas Golden Arm Awards. Stay with us. Some final thoughts. The special Out of Bounds continues.